Hey, so today I'm going to be unboxing and giving first impressions on the Pinwheel Kids Phone. So this video is a part of a series for scrolling to death that includes products that market themselves as kids safe. Uh, we know that the journey to get your kids a full-blown smartphone is going to look different for each of your families. So what we're trying to do is help make that easier for you by giving really honest reviews of the products that are available to us. We already reviewed the Bark phone and you can get that video here. And soon we're getting the Gizmo watch, which I'm excited about showing you guys too. Before I dig into the pinwheel phone, I have to put in a note here that these phones are marketed to kids. In my personal opinion, kids in most cases do not need phones. For example, this pinwheel phone that I'm going to be looking at is marketed to kids as young as eight years old. Our daughter turns eight next week, and I will tell you she's years away from needing a phone. She's never asked for a phone. There's just no need. And so I know every family is different. I know there's a big demand for these kids' safe phones, so that's why we're providing you these reviews. But before you give your kids a phone, really ask yourself why they need it, how it's going to look within your family, and what your guidelines are going to be for them to use that phone safely. In our experience speaking with several different therapists, psychotherapists, and experts in this field, once you give the phone, it can be very difficult to take it back. So don't make this decision lightly. A little bit of info on the pinwheel phone. They market this product as a healthy kid's phone. They say it fosters a healthy relationship with tech through a tool designed just for your child or teen. And it's said that it's the smartphone that grows with your child. So it has different levels to help you guide your child from having their first phone to being completely independent in their use of technology. With the pinwheel phone, parents can uh, approve contacts. They can monitor texts and call history. They can access hundreds of pre-vetted apps. Uh, there's a GPS locator, so you always know where your kid is. Uh, parents can manage screen time with schedules for different times of day. So you, they have different modes like in-school mode, after-school mode, uh, weekend mode, night mode. So you can decide uh, what they have access to during certain times of day. Parents can actually set tasks within the phone to help build independence, help kids manage their priorities and their task list. Um, and parents monitor all of this activity through Pinwheel's caregiver portal. One thing that was interesting to note is that this product is compatible with Bark technology, which the Bark phone is something that we reviewed before. And it's interesting that it can integrate with the Bark phone technology, which helps to monitor the text messages. Uh, and another thing to note is that there's no web browser and no social media available on this phone, which is good. There are four new phone products available from Pinwheel. So there's the Pixel, which offers the best photo quality. That's $599. There's the Plus, which is uh, 5G capable and is $329. There's the Slim, which is a bit more affordable at $199. And there's the Rugged, which has durable casing and is $249. These are much more pricey than the Bark Phone, which is $199. So the Bark Phone at $199 is similar to the Slim option at $199. They also have a section of their website of pre-owned phones, though it currently shows those phones to be out of stock. I want to say thank you to Pinwheel for sending me this phone. You guys were super responsive, um, really interested in us doing a review and letting parents know about your product. So thank you for that. Okay, so now we're going to look at the Pinwheel phone. The Pinwheel phone is actually a Samsung Galaxy phone, just like the Bark phone. To compare... Here's the Bark phone, and here's the pinwheel phone. I might get confused about which is which until I turned them on. I actually already spent quite a bit of time activating this. It was a bit more confusing, to be honest, uh, than activating the Bark phone, but I think that's just normal. I spent probably 20, 30 minutes activating this phone and getting the portal set up. So once I got through the activation steps, I found the caregiver portal to be pretty easy to use. Uh, one thing that I've taken a look at so far is the apps that are available for the parent to pull through to the kid's pinwheel phone. 
There are hundreds of apps available for parents to pull through to their kid's phone. I did a quick review of those apps and I wanted to mention something. The apps are given ratings by Pinwheel. Either they're Pinwheel approved or they're slightly out of bounds or some are marked as violates guidelines, which I find to be interesting that parents are still able to install apps that Pinwheel considers to violate their guidelines to the kid's phone. I wonder why that is, Um, just something I'm wondering about. I also noticed a few apps that offer diet trackers, which I don't think is great for a kid's phone, but I am happy that YouTube is not available on this kid's phone. I have done a lot of research on the inappropriate content available through YouTube and even YouTube Kids. So I was happy to see that YouTube was not available. There are lots of apps available that are really great for teens. Banking apps, educational apps, travel apps, meditation apps, all kinds of things that I think would be really great for teens to be learning how to use during the teen years. A lot of this stuff is not, in my opinion, relevant to kids. From what I see available through this phone, I think that teens would really benefit from it. So to conclude, I will compare this pinwheel phone to the Bark phone that I already reviewed. The pinwheel phone is way better marketing, um, way more product options, was more difficult to, to activate initially, but the pinwheel phone seems way more locked down. The parental controls seem a lot easier to set up and to push through. The apps seem easier to push through to the phone. I feel like I would have way more comfortability around knowing what my kid is accessing on this phone in comparison to the Bark phone just as is. I think the Bark phone would need a lot more time spent to get it to a point where I would feel comfortable giving it to my kid. I think the direction I would go here is if I had a teenager that was of the age that I wanted to start introducing a phone, at this point I would give them the pinwheel phone. I would integrate the Bark technology into this phone And I think I would feel pretty comfortable with that. One thing I want to note is that so far these kids' phones are all Samsung phones. I would love if there would be an iPhone version of a kid-friendly phone. I like to have compatibility between what me and my husband use and what the kids will eventually use. So if I ask myself the question, would I give the pinwheel phone to my children? My oldest is turning eight. And that answer is no. An eight-year-old, in my opinion, does not need a phone. I'm sure there are outlier cases where they might need a phone, but for my family, it's a no. Would I give this phone to my teenager? Probably. I think that teenagers need to start understanding how to use a phone and integrate it into their life in a balanced way. And so if my kids were of teenage years, maybe 14, 15, 16 years old, I think this would be a great starter phone that the parents can control exactly what they have access to and be able to monitor the conversations. I said this in the review of the Bark phone and I'll say it again. When it comes to parents monitoring their children's conversations through their technology, there can be a big trust issue there. I want parents to consider finding a balance between keeping an eye on things that need to be kept an eye on and giving their children and teenagers the freedom to express themselves in private ways. What you want through this experience as a parent is to build trust with your teenager and make sure they feel that trust. And in reading every single conversation that they have, I think your teenager can end up feeling like they're being surveilled and it's not a great feeling, right? When I speak with psychotherapists and different experts on this topic, they advise parents to ensure that they're dedicating enough time and energy into having a close relationship between you and your teen, keeping communication at the forefront. That way, if there's an issue, you're going to know because they're going to tell you. If your teenager's behavior changes in a way that is concerning to you, if they stop doing the regular activities, if they're more quiet than normal, if they're not hanging out with their friends as much. Those are signs that maybe you need to take a look at their technology and see if there's something uncomfortable going on. But only after you've asked them, right? Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's give them the trust that they deserve in communicating with them first before we monitor and just creating a good balance there that doesn't break your teenager's trust.
Thank you for listening in on this review of the Pinwheel Phone for Kids. I did like the product. I did like the caregiver portal. I do feel like this product gives me some ownership over what my kids are seeing while also giving them freedom to explore on their own. My official opinion is that this phone is for teenagers and not kids. Uh, but again, every family is going to make that decision for themselves. Keep an eye out for future reviews. The next one is going to be on the Gizmo Watch by Verizon, which I'm really excited to show you guys. I think the Gizmo Watch may be a good solution if you feel like you need to be able to communicate with your preteen or kid when they're not at home. So I'll get back to you on that. And again, thank you for watching. More from Scrolling to Death coming soon.